Welcome back guys to LPB Racing. This is race two of the Mixed Championship on Project Cars 2. Getting ready for a start. Cyrex won the first race, that means he's at the back with Bitzer and everyone else. Oh! I don't know whether that was a jump start by Stevie, I think it was. Blatantly through the middle there, so we've almost got five wide already down into towards the first corner. Incredible stuff. This is going to end up in tears. Surely contact between Blatantly and Jamo. Jen James Deluxe comes alongside. Blatantly leads into turn one. Jamo goes round. Everyone else trying to jostle for position. Bit of contact in the middle, but everyone else okay well. Jamo still alongside Blatantly, not giving up. Wants to have the bragging rights into, the, into turn two but gets it done Blaney in the lead and then Bidster comes down on the inside of Stevie I think that was in the background let's have a look as we go up through the outer loop section this time so quick left right there we go so Blaney doing very well there in the lead Jamo in second Bidster flashing his lights up footman saying I'm coming to get you as Cyrex making his way through the field as well Trying to get through past Stevie there, he's got past Keith and a few others already. TY going backwards in that escort there, he's rejoined it after disconnecting in the first one. You see there, but look how he gets left behind on the straight by everything else. Amazing. But then look at this, the Mercedes power of Bidster flying past Footman and then trying to get him James Deluxe as well, but he doesn't, man, doesn't manage to get James Deluxe. Tries to keep her on the inside of Footman. Footman's still there, not giving up, but now the Mercedes power will get put down and he'll get the power on ahead of the next corner. Into the next corner we go, beautiful stuff. And then we come down towards this next corner. Jammer having a little look at Blaney there, no way through. Bidster, oh, very late on the brakes there. James Deluxe is next target, trying to look for a way through past James Deluxe now. 15 laps of this one because it's a shorter, shorter circuit. Cyrex trying to go around the outside of Footman. Doesn't manage to get it done, but all the power of the Mercedes bring him alongside. If it doesn't hear it, he'll do it on the straight. Let's have a little look further back. We've got Azadar, Blade and Keith having a little battle back here as well. TY's ahead of Stevie. Stevie's gone way back. Stevie's right back there. So Stevie's gone off somewhere. We'll get a replay. So as we come back from that, Blaney and Jammer in the lead. Bidster passing. James Deluxe now on power. That Mercedes again going really well here. Good car choice by Bidster and Cyrex as we go through. Fir the first turn is now got Jamo in his sights. But behind we've got Keith and sorry, Cyrex and Footman close together as well. That's another one to keep an eye on. Footman defending to the corner. Meanwhile, and then all oh, few cars wide in the background and Jamo and Bidster's lost control of the Mercedes. He's gone off. And bang, hits Blaney off, and then Jamo hits him. No! Goes off the track completely, takes Jamo out and takes Blaney out. Oh no, that's not like Bidster at all. He must have had a major car problem there or something happened. But Bidster makes a huge mistake, takes himself out of the race, and then there's Blaney rejoining. So obviously, we're waiting for Blaney to rejoin. But oh, so unlucky there for Bidster and Blaney, especially because Blaney was doing so well there in the lead, looking good for a good battle to the end, but unfortunately Bidster came across and ruined the party. But uh, we'll get a replay on that. OK, here's on board with Bidster now on lap three for what happened at that uh, hairpin. So we're coming out to the hairpin, onto the brakes. Bidster too late on the brakes, tries to avoid everyone by going onto the grass, but then just can't stop the car. Hits Blaney off. He couldn't have really gone, gone the other way because it wouldn't have worked. So, unlucky there for Bidster, takes uh, Blakeney out, who was even more unlucky in that circumstance. He's waiting for Blakeney to rejoin, but Blakeney rejoins at the other side of the circuit on the grass. You'll see him there, and that's what caused Blakeney to go a lap down, unfortunately. But it, we don't, we don't, we're not going to count. We don't, we don't count it as a lap down because it wasn't really fair on him. Let's have a look at this now from Jamo's point of view. So we're into the hairpin, looking for his apex, a little bit wide. There's Bidster, bang and bang, Blakeney rolls over. Completely rolls over and then he's stuck to the front of the car. And if we look here, he tries to rejoin. Bang! Into the other cars. That's caused a bit of damage for a few others. And then Jamo ends up getting going. So that was what happened from Jamo's point of view. Okay, now let's go on board with Blaney himself. Into the corner. We'll see bids around here somewhere. There he is. Bang! We then roll over. Nowhere to go. And then we rejoin just as two other cars are coming round. And that, and then we end up having to go the other way across the track, back onto the track there, and then that's what put Blake Neal lap down. 
So as we rejoin the action and after that massive crash, TY up to fifth place now on the Escort ahead of Azadar Blade. Again, sliding that Escort through the corners. It's really good through the corners, but on the straight, it's where it gets let down. Jamo, uh, sorry, James Deluxe in the lead. He gets, oh, the footman's off. Footman's off. He's going, oh, he's going down the other bit of the track now. So he's got to go round the, round the, that bit of the tyre wall, round the hairpin as he rejoins right into the path of TY. Got to be careful when you rejoin Footman. But uh, there, Azadar Blade goes a bit wide there. He's left himself vulnerable if anyone's behind him, which they're not. But TY now, he'll not have the power on the straight. He's going to get a good run through this last corner to be able to keep with Footman on the straight. Meanwhile, Cyrex and Jamo running close together, but Cyrex is going to pass Jamo, uh, sorry, pass James Deluxe. I'm really sorry about the, getting the names wrong. It's just the, again, on the left hand side of the screen, Jamo and James Deluxe both with Jam on, on the three letter abbreviation. So Cyrex takes the lead then for the second time. And it looks like he's going to pull away from James Deluxe and get a good gap. So Cyrex in the lead, possibly looking for his second race win in a row. Keith in third position, doing very well there, make, making up for the people's errors. So Keith in there in fourth place with Footman and Ty right behind as well. So and then we've got a nice little gaggle of cars back here as well. We've got Neil, uh, sorry Jamo, uh, Azadar and Neil very close together. So there's Azadar going around the hairpin with, in, the, in a Jamo Neil sandwich. And then we've got Blakeney a bit further back. It says Blakeney's 11th. He's not. He's uh, should be. Uh, that place where Bidster is, so he should be 9th and then he should be 11th. So, uh, Bidster should be... Uh, let's have a look back here and have a look, let's get this right. So yeah, uh, Blakeney should be 9th, Bidster should be 10th, but Blakeney's been put down as 11th because he cut, because when Bidster took him out he had to rejoin on the grass, he, even though he lost loads of places, because he cut the track technically, it's put him back a lap behind, which I don't agree with, but... Uh, it's uh, so wherever uh, just got to keep an eye on the positions for Blakeney as they cross the line but at the current moment he is uh, he is ninth and Bidster is 10th as it, as it would stand so here we are oh, look, more cars off in the background Azadar Blade with a very very sideways BMW there into the hairpin Neil Farmack gets in front good stuff there for, oh we're having a little sneaky look at the inside of Neil that's not, that's not going to work as we go down towards the hairpin now, Keith and TY very close together there. TY trying to go around the outside in the escort, and he'll probably be able to do it in the escort. But again, he gets a good, gets a good run there, but then going to get the power on. Watch this. Keith just pulls away in the BMW. The escort left to a standstill on the straight. And you'll see Jamo start to close up now. He's going to have a look, a look into the first corners past TY as well. But I'm not sure that's going to happen or not. No, it's not. TY, again that Escort very good on the brakes and into the corners if it was a much tighter track that Escort would be doing very well indeed it would probably be one of the best cars in its class if it was a very tight track but unfortunately because it's an acceleration track and well he's doing what uh, Escorts do best there eh? rally crossing I think I saw Neil Farmack going wide in the background I think he's uh, oh there he is he's gone round in circles so Neil Farmack goes round there oh no Neil Farmack goes round we'll get a replay on that Here's a replay of what happened to Neil Farmack on lap 7 into the fast left-hander. He slightly taps the kerb, goes off, loses the back of the car, and then across it just in front of Bidster. Oh, very close to avoiding there, and then that's where we saw him rejoining back in the circle, and then rejoins the track. And now here's on board with Bidster as Neil goes off, to see him go off there, and then we have to whoa, avoid <laughs> in such a big car, but he gets it. So as we come back from that, Bidster is now ahead of Blakeney without taking him off this time. So Blakeney back down to uh, what, what, what would be ninth place because Neil Farmack has gone backwards. So Blakeney, not Blakeney ninth, Bidster eighth. So I know it doesn't say that on the timing screen, but that's what it is on the in the actual race. And then we've got Jamo and Ty very close together still with Keith just ahead. Jamo goes ahead on power. TY onto the brakes, very good on the brakes indeed, but Jamo covers it off very well indeed, not leaving any room for that Escort to exploit its cornering dif difference. It's very good on the corner in the Escort. As we go around this corner, you'll see here, be able to carry so much speed there is. And then doesn't, doesn't go wide and start rally crossing this time, and towards the hairpin. Jamo closing up on Keith. 
There he is, Keith, running a very solid fourth place at the moment. Footman just ahead. And he's got a bit of a train behind him now because Arsenal Al Blades got caught up to the back of this train. So four cars battling for fourth place. And then Bid still will soon be joining them if they're not if they're not careful. As Keith goes into the last corner, oh, runs a bit wide there. Jamal's going to get a good run out of that corner. We get his steering straightened up, but he's not alongside. He's got to fall fall back in and go for the draft. There he is, Jamal. The black BMW. We're not running for Team Black, but just did a black one coincidentally. Lilian not here as Bid's teammate, and so is Seat One not here also. As we look at the other cars into the first corner, Azadar Blade keeping the pressure on T.Y. T.Y. mounts the curb, loses speed, but then Bidster is alongside Azadar Blade now. Azadar Blade goes backwards after losing a bit of time, and then Bidster goes through next target, T.Y. in the Escort. As they go down towards the hairpin, again, that Escort looking very good. In the corners, again, it's just not the right track for it because it's just got so many accelerations and zones. And Azadar Blade there goes wide again. Looking for the back of that Mercedes, but uh, looking from the wrong angle as we come down towards the last corner. Look how much that Mercedes closes up to, to the Escort on the on the straight. We'll get we'll get a good power difference here. This is the difference that two that 180 horsepower makes. That goes past him like he's in a different class. Straight by, and then he's already almost catching up to Jamo. He's already built up about a second and a half already for Ty. In towards the first corner, but then obviously the escort will close up in the brakes. There it is. And then Bidster looking for his way through now past Jamo, who was also trying to attack Keith, don't forget. So so Keith got to try and keep these two cars behind now. As Jamo has a look into the hairpin, just moves out, just positions the car to the inside. Keith looks in his mirrors, but no, we can see that he can turn in. Plenty of room to do that. As he goes round the hairpin Bidster in the middle of this and that's so oh, Mercedes throwing it sideways trying to get the power on as early as possible that, not handling very well that Mercedes by any means but it's fast sideways into the last corner as well Jamo is about to get eaten by a Mercedes here onto the straight but again Jamo gets a very good run onto the straight but it's not enough here comes Bidster powering past Jamo trying to look to get Keith as well he's going to be able to get Keith into the first corner as well he might be able to do it as with the camera pans, and he's alongside Keith into the first corner, and he's got him. Jamo sees the she's an opening as well. Opportunistic driving there from Jamo side by side. Ty says I want in on this as well. Ty right behind Jamo trying to get past Keith, but again not having the power in that escort. Jamo again ahead of Keith now. So Jamo ahead of Keith. Could Keith fight back into the hairpin? No, too much of a gap. Ty has a little look, but no, thinks twice about it. Keith slightly defending from Ty. So Keith lost two places there in one go. Bidster opened the door. Well, opened a very big door with that fat Mercedes. Opened a very wide door. And then Jamo was like, oh, I'll, I'll walk through as well. And now I'll, uh, I'll come through into fifth place as well. Keith back down to sixth place. Ty seventh. Azad Al Blade now catching up to Ty. And uh, also Blakeney make, making a comeback. So Blakeney would be in ninth place. He's not ninth. And. Um, that person is technically ninth at the minute, but on pay, on the actual uh, on the actual positions, it, it, it's Blakeney ninth, Neil tenth, and Stevie eleventh. So Stevie there is in last place. So Stevie having a horrible race in this one. So oh, we've got Footman and oh, let's get through to the front. Footman and Jamo close together. Is it Jamo? No, it's Bidster. Footman and Bidster close together. Bidster over the curb, sideways, and then <laughs> cheekily flashes lights to flash the back ones, saying thank you very much to Footman. Uh, but Footman says, no, you don't, Sunshine. I'm going to have you back right inside. But then Bits has got the inside for the next corner and should be able to keep the position. Parks the car on the apex, slides the car out the corner. Brilliant stuff there from Bits to his ahead. Again, another little cheeky flash of the lights. Thank you very much. As we go into the into the last corner there, Footman for closing on Bits now. Bits are very sideways in the Mercedes, gets the power on way too early. And he's lost a lot of time there. Footman's going to go straight back through. There he is, Bidster. He's rejoining there. So Bidster, again, too aggressive on that power. Getting a bit too carried away with himself. And falls back down. But again, he'll be up to speed in that Mercedes in no time. Might be, might, it might weigh about three, three tonne, four tonne. But it uh, can definitely throw its weight around. So he's going to get past Footman again. But I don't see it being too much of an issue, especially with the power difference. Meanwhile, Sarex is still in the lead of this race by 12 to 13 seconds from Jamo in second. As Footman starts rally crossing in the BMW, 
bits just slices up the inside just about gets the car stopped and gets through bits the throwing that Mercedes round like it's only like it only weighs about half a ton so brilliant stuff there gets through past Footman that's what he wanted to do on Blakeney on the first lap but couldn't do it on, on the uh, sorry one of the, one of the opening laps but couldn't do it so Bidster and in the lead of the race, bit smoother there on the acceleration and gets ahead. Meanwhile, Keith in the middle of this pack, sixth place. There he is. TY behind him. We've got a car off in the background. There he is. Arsenal our blade loses time. Blatney's gonna come up. Blatney moves to the inside. Blatney should be able to get this done before the next corner on the overspeed. And he does. Blatney goes through, tucks back in. Arsenal tries to go for the inside into the next one, but I don't think that's gonna work. No, it doesn't. Blatney continues in to 8th position so uh, Blakeney up to 8th Arzadar back down to 9th now I can tell you that because obviously I remember it didn't count Blakeney's lap in that one as we go to the hairpin Keith under pressure from TY TY right behind him Cyrex is already on his last lap of the race so Cyrex doing well there already on the last lap here comes Bidson in the Mercedes and there uh, there's Keith with Ty White behind, looking very good there as we go around the last corner. Ty White trying to close up, but again Ty White will lose speed on the straight. But here's one person we've not looked at much in this race, and that's Cyrex because he's been right out in front, dominating from the start. Good job by Cyrex. So ever since that incident, managed to get through to the lead on about like four or five, and then more or less led a good uh, two thirds of this race so Cyrex coming up to the last corner now round the last corner very gentle on the power nicely out of the corner and Cyrex is going to take his second win good job for Cyrex second win two in a row good job by Cyrex well deserved well done James Deluxe is going to be in second place again a, um, a wild card for this championship just doing the odd, odd race but again a good position he's a good lad very fair racer and finishes second place good job by James Deluxe well done in that one Bidster is going to be third remember it's random grid in the next one so it could be anything Bidster in third place there well done to Bidster even though he had a bit of a horrible start to that one should we say Jamo in fourth just from Footman then Keith sixth TY seventh Azadar is going to be in eighth position uh, oh, Blakeney stops near the line, so I can tell you there that Blakeney would have actually finished eighth. Sorry, Blakeney would have finished eighth. He was just stopping to try and get across the line without it timing out. So Blakeney would have been eighth. Azadar would have been ninth. Neil tenth. Stevie eleventh. So that was. The okay, guys, let's take you through the results then. So Cyrex was your winner in that one by 18.3 seconds from James Deluxe. Again, on the podium in second place. Well done to James Deluxe. Bidster in third position as we just flick over the page. Then it was Jamo in fourth. Fifth place goes to Footman. Sixth place to Keith. TY in seventh place. Eighth is Arzadar Blade. Neil Farmack in ninth. Stevie in tenth. And Blakeney rounds off the 11. So that was the results from that. And there is your winner, Cyrex in the Mercedes. Well done to Cyrex. Two wins in a row, and we'll see you guys for race three. Take care.